again, thank you very, very much. I'll try to stick to the schedule so that we don't, um, you know, uh, run um, um, a mock. But um, I, I, I gave, uh, you know, I unfortunately not everyone uh, has a call sign, so it's a little more difficult for me to recognize the names. But I definitely recognize um, uh, Rogers and uh, the couple more guys. Um, I, I, I've heard them. I, I copied them in some of the pilots, and uh, they definitely. Uh, a little more aware, uh, definitely aware of what uh, IOTA stands for. But the scope of my presentation is to give you first a little bit of, um, uh, let's say, have a com commonality of what, what, what this IOTA is all about. Uh, maybe some of you are not yet that familiar with it, and then maybe will be attracted, hopefully will. Um, but if not, don't be shy. It's okay. Not everybody's, uh, you know, falls always on the same, uh, likes the same dish or... Um, uh, and and uh, th so there'll be a little bit of a presentation of, uh, of, of some basics of the program. Um, I'm not trying to get too much into that. If there's any questions or follow-ups, if you want me, just don't be afraid. Um, send me the, the, the questions and I'll try to reply. I happen to be, so IOTA stands for Island. Th then afterwards in the second part, uh, it will be, um, I'm gonna try to, to, to present some slides of some of the operations that I have been involved in. Hopefully that will, um, uh, you know, some of them will, will make you, um, you know, will, 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 will make you understand a little bit more about the program. And um, it's, it's just a representation. I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal. I'm trying to just give an examples of how operations are all about. Some of them are a little more challenging than others, but, you know, um, and then we'll, um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick up some questions if they are, if they aren't, please, 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 uh, if they come later, do not uh, hesitate uh, individually connecting me or as any way you wish. Uh, I am the uh, operations manager and um, the deputy general manager of the IOTA program. I, IOTA stands for Islands on the Air. And I will tell you a little bit more about this, as I said, just in a minute. But in my capacity of being on the board of directors of IOTA Limited, which is a non-for-profit organization, uh, none of them of the uh, of the uh, of the board members or anybody has anything to do with it is paid except for our accountant, which this has to present some thing at the end of the year, and he has to sign there. <clears throat> um, so, in, in that position, my obligation is to. Um, to be ready to share, uh, spread any information about the program with anybody, clarify and uh, any questions. And if they are questions that I can't, then I'll forward them to the proper guys who, who can. We have an IT manager, we have an awards manager, uh, all sorts of other individuals who can, can help uh, with details that, you know, I, I may not be always either uh, well, I think I'm familiar, but I may, I may not, I, 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 there might be questions that are too, too detailed and then we'll have to forward to the right guys. So let's, let's, uh, let's move on. So the IOTA program, and I'm sure that everybody here is uh, in a way or another familiar with the DXCC, uh, it's a little bit different because it just doesn't revolve around this, this core principle of the political order. Although I, DXCCs have on a, a, a few um, <clears throat> elements on their own that are somehow uh, more, more difficult to introduce them in the political order. But IOTA in particular, it's, it's related to the islands, to the open sea islands of the world. And it's a structure uh, which is based on a number of rules, um, which are part of a, of a, of a document of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a document that we called uh, IOTA directory. And the concept is that there's a cap um, at least at this time, and it's been for ever, the cap is of 1,200 island groups. So that means that uh, all the islands in the world will be, are, are divided in 1,200 groups. And uh, these 1,200 groups are, have the same role of, of counters for the program as the 340 actual entities have for the DXCC. There's lots of differences, but obviously apart from <laughs> from the counters between the DXCC and IOTA. Uh, one example is that if, if an island uh, submerges at some point in time, and let's say that island is the only, the unique counter of a particular uh, IOTA group or IOTA reference, their IOTA reference will disappear. But the concept of deleted means that nobody can ever be credited for that thing again. Reason being that, um, 
you know, it's, it's part of the, of the world geography and now it isn't. And we kind of want to keep everyone engaged in what's today, not now had that happened. Yes, there are about, I think, six or seven groups in the world that had been over time um, canceled because the islands were maybe a little bit further but, uh, from mainland, but they were still part of some estuaries. And eventually they got clogged and uh, the island disappeared. And as well, there's some um, islands in the Pacific that uh, are, are now, you know, some, some reefs that are now like Minerva Reef, which are now fully submerged. Um, so, um, apart from this, I'm just going to continue, uh, you know, because I'm not going to present everything. You, you, there's always a possibility to read some of this stuff. So, <clears throat> we have a definition for the island, and the definition is rather long and complicated, but um, to make it just as simple as possible, there has to be a minimum 200 meters of a water channel to the island. So, if you have an, a, an island that is uh, say 50 meters from the mainland and the island has one kilometer, but the next island straight uh, on, on, the, uh, the, 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 on the straightest line to the coast, it's only 30 meters to this island. Even if the distance from the second island, the first island won't count because it has only five, uh, 50 meters of water, but the second island won't count either because although the distance to the continent is one point, whatever I said, one point, say two kilometers, 1.1 kilometers, uh, the total amount of uh, water channel is, um, is, is less than 200, right? So <clears throat> by that, we identified about, and then there are all sorts of other things. Uh, it has to be shown and named or recognized official map. In other words, if you have a rock sticking out, a uh, tiny little thing that ba barely a couple of birds would sit on, um, that doesn't have, and, and it's not named, it's, it's not, you know, not on any, um, that, that does, it's not a rec on an official map, on a, on, a, on a sail map, on a sailing map, on a marine chart or something, that simply is not going to be uh, acknowledged. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to be uh, endorsed for the program. And uh, there are some other uh, issues which are, you know, like artificial man-made islands for the purpose of building uh, monuments or all sorts of things like that, then don't count. It has to be uh, you know, some, some, some rock that still exists above the, 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 the water at high tide. And there are a few other details, but just to give you a little bit of an idea, not all the islands can count, but uh, with this, we have uh, about 70, 17, 17,000 islands grouped in these 1,200 uh, island groups. And obviously some, some groups have more counters, some others have less, maybe even just one, because um, that's how the geography works. It's an isolated island in the middle of the ocean somewhere uh, and fits the criteria that, that we have and uh, it is what it is. Um, so we do not claim to have identified all the islands, but after 17,000 islands identified, actually I think we kind of started this after we had about 16,000 and that was a while back, we said, okay, well, you know, we'll we'll put in, we'll we'll uh, we'll accept any islands that are are would be valid, but you have to have an expedition plan. You have to do it. We're just not going to start studying these things and putting islands there just because they exist. Because there's so many islands. Probably in in uh, in Indonesia alone, we're missing I don't know twenty thousand islands or ten thousand islands, right? So um, <clears throat> that's kind of the. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the way in which, which IOTA looks at this stuff. Um, now, as far as the group categories, because I mentioned there are 1,200, um, this could either be an island group known geographically, let's say uh, Shetland Islands, uh, or it has to be, or there are many like, like Sicily or, or you know, uh, Corsica, uh, or it has to be uh, a remote island group uh, if, if there's any island that is further than 150 kilometers uh, from any other closest island to it, um, and it's, it's not along the coast, um, it, this is, this is uh, 150 kilometers all around sort of thing, you know, um, then this could, could, be, uh, could, could, could be part of a so-called remote island group. Do we have things like this? Yes, we do. I'll just mention you one now. It's called Victoria Island, which is part of the 
um, part of the um, um, Franz Joseph archipelago. But as a matter of fact, it's so far away from, from them that only two operations have ever been made, of which one was after the island was, rec was recognized. And, you know, it, usually people go to uh, one of the, the big islands, which are part of the Franz Josef for the DXCC. So this island is, you know, very, very, very far, includes, you know, so <clears throat> do we have other situations like that? Yes, we do. And we continuously looking to see if we can identify more. Um, so, and, and, you know, and, and all sorts of other categories that I just, I, I just mentioned there, sleep sovereignty islands, uh, like the, um, the one in uh, <coughs> Saint Martin, Saint Martin, you know, this kind of things. For us, Saint Martin and Saint Martin is just, um, uh, you know, we, you have two DXCCs, right? But, but we have uh, one IOTA, and there are several, you know, issues, several examples like that. <clears throat> so that's, that's just to give you an example of how some of these things are, are uh, uh, you know, are, are considered. So to date, of these 1,200 groups, only 11 and 36 have been activated, have been operated from, and uh, let's say have been accepted towards credit. So uh, what does it mean? What about the remaining um, 64? What's so, what's so difficult to do them? Well, uh, first of all, um, our list is, you know, kind of provisionally. We may still have to change it because so far I think we have about 34 groups in Antarctica that have never been activated. And it's probably unlikely, probably in the next 200 years to be. So we have to probably um, chisel that a little bit and maybe reduce them. Uh, we haven't done that yet, but maybe reduce them to, I don't know, something more reasonable. Uh, in other words, maybe the groupings should be a little larger than what we planned around the world. But there are also, I think, about three groups in Libya, which is a difficult place to go to. So it's, uh, you know, there are another, I think, at least three groups in North Korea, might be four, um, which is another place. And there are all sorts of other difficulties. There are a number of islands which are now, um, you know, by the national uh, departments of conservations or alike, whatever they have, sort of U.S. fish and wildlife type, um, 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 you know, administrators. This is difficult, virtually impossible to get there. We have to leave them though, because you know they will be part of the groups. Whether at some point we group them uh, to reduce number and maybe, maybe, maybe include some other, uh, decide to, to change that a little bit to give more dynamic to the program, they're still, uh, but they're still there. One example, almost every single island, which is part of the North uh, Western Hawaiian group um, and has never been activated except, uh, well, the end of it, which I think is Curie and um, the beginning of it, which I think it's um, uh, French frigate, um, those are all, I think there are six more uh, of these groups that have never been activated. Just to give you a, a few examples, and, uh, uh, and, and very, very, very difficult places to go to if, if it's not uh, because of uh, humans who, 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 who imposed all these restrictions, and that includes um, Libya and North Korea, and I, I'm kind of putting them all there. Uh, there are others that are very, very difficult physically to reach, kind of like the ones in Antarctica that I just mentioned. There's no, uh, you know, it's impossibility to travel by boat there. Uh, you know, in, our, in other parts, it's, it's wildlife, it's the difficulties and so on and so forth. So that's where we stand. Uh, <clears throat> however, this is a, a, a performance-based program. So the top score has 1132. And among the top scores, there will be guys who missed not just four, but maybe not the same four or five or six islands. So some of them may have one or two uh, that others don't. Um, but they are about uh, 600 people, uh, uh, 600 chasers now above uh, 750, who have about 750 credits, which, which entitles them to claim the, the, the so-called plaque of excellence. And uh, <clears throat> they are about 1,700 people in the annual listing, which require them to update at least one in five year, once in five years. And they're about 4,000 4, members. So the IOTA program right now, I don't, I'm not sure the DXCC program, how many uh, active people have, because you know, some of them obviously uh, became silent key, like my, my dad. 
uh, over the years, but um, I assume that they would be a, an order of magnitude larger, if not more. So if we have about 4,000, they probably have about 40,000, 50,000, who knows? So that's kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of um, where this stands. Um, <clears throat> now, very quickly, because I'm going to finish very soon about this and we're going to start with the slides expeditions kind of thing. Um, this shows you a little bit of a dynamic within roughly about 30 years. How percentage wise, obviously, we didn't have 4,000 members back in 1992. We had a small fraction of them. Uh, they were very devoted <laughs> to the program, but about the three quarters of them were from Europe and about a quarter of them from North America. Well, today the situation is a little bit different. Uh, we still have about, you know, over 50% of them in, in Europe, uh, the tons and tons and tons of groups uh, in, in Europe. So, uh, you know, reaching 100 islands, 100 groups, so it's, it's uh, relatively easy. Although to be an IOLA member, you need to have 100 islands from and at least one from each of the seven continents. Um, but you have a, a, a huge increase in percentage, almost 20% in Asia. And while you might think uh, at first, because that's just of the phenomenal number of, of, of hands in Japan, mm -hmm. that's only part of it. There's a tremendous uptick in the presence of lots of other guys from Asia, but particularly from UA0. So definitely Japan is the, is the strongest uh, you know, um, group coming up. But uh, UA0 is uh, it's, it's definitely uh, on, on the increase. And even for the other parts, you can see that uh, Oceania had 0.3%, it's 1.8%. Maybe, it, you know, maybe the percentage is low, but it, it's a significant increase, we think. And uh, also South, uh, um, uh, sorry, um, Africa, uh, well, Africa and uh, South America were not really there. Antarctica, well, let's not even talk about it. We just have one station. Um, but, uh, and we're very proud of that. Uh, but this also gives you a little bit of an idea that in pileups, uh, while we'd like to give everybody a chance, and we do, uh, or I think, or at least over the last 15, 20 years, when IOTA became really, really kind of a world program, uh, we, we definitely, vast majority of the activators would be aware of that if the time permits, if they're there for a longer period of time. Obviously, we have to cater primarily uh, to, to, to you know, Europe, uh, North America, and Asia. So somehow, um, you know, the, the performance of, of the team would be judged by how these guys kind of get in the log. If, if we only have uh, expedition from the end of the world and only uh, five, which is difficult conditions to Europe, whatever, and we only have 5% of Europe, that's probably not going to you know, the guys are not going to be happy with that. So, you know, it gives you an idea why, why we guys will call CQEU or, or NA or NS and, you know, they look for that. So <clears throat> the credit system is uh, always been based on QSL cards. Uh, we changed that dramatically in 2016 when IOTA separated from RSGB. I was part of that funding process of the IOTA Limited for a number of reasons, which are probably beyond our scope, but the main interest being that the guys on the board of directors of RSGB uh, were very supportive and very, very interested in, uh, in having, uh, you know, sort of this thing, uh, finding a good home. Um, they didn't want to put the effort to maintain it to what we thought was their flagship. So there was a discrepancy in, in how they perceived the program. And then we were just happy to, to take it away from them. Uh, that being said, they offered us a, a, a substantial uh, grant to make sure that we'll be able to put in place uh, a number of software, uh, you know, IT related uh, issue to handle the program and, you know, to do that. And want to, 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 to give us a little bit of a help in, in setting this up. And once we did that, uh, we immediately moved to something that we desired for a long time, bringing it into the 21st century, which was to, to provide credits through QSO matching uh, via LFTW, which is what, what, uh, what uh, the, um, the XCC program does as well, but also via club log and via the IOTA contest log, which are hosted on the RSGB side, but there's a way in which we, we interact with them. So um, <clears throat> uh, this thing is a lot more complicated than you might imagine at a, at a site, at, at a, but I'm gonna give you one hint. Let us suppose that you have a call sign from a particular station, let's say LA1AA. LA1AA, it's Norway, it has an ID, in the in the uh, IDIF call in uh, IDF uh, pro in the IDF, uh, code that tells that that is Norway, and uh, when they send the logs, 
it's automatically read. It will all be in the DXCC LA. There's no question about it. And if somebody operates from uh, JW or JX from, you know, that will have another ID code. Easy, not a problem. Uh, it's, it's, it's very, very easy, almost no control, just there's probably some software to do checkups as far as the RL, IWRL and LODW are concerned. For IOTA, LA1A or LA1AA, particularly uh, in that country, uh, stations can operate with that call sign from anywhere. So they could operate over time from their home QTH, which is on mainland, from a a cottage, which is maybe on an island that does not belong to IOTA, it's not part of the IOTA, doesn't fit the criteria. But then every now and then they spend summers because they like IOTA to places, contests and things where they operate under the same call sign. And it could be several islands that belong to the same group or several islands that belong to multiple groups. And there's no way to distinguish between the stuff unless to, 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 do, the, uh, to do the QSO matching unless we do, a num we do a lot of work. That work is to obtain some information from, from uh, the respective uh, uh, activator, which is not always that easy, uh, and then compare it to, to, to our previous credits that were issued. And unless we are 110% sure that we have it right, we will not enable the logs for QSO matching. Now, that being said, um, there are 82% of all the credits issued in 2020. And that's from, for our year starts um, February 1st, January 31st. So 82% of the credits issued in, in 2020 were through QSO matching. So that tells you that over, I'm, I'm gonna tell you that over 11,000 operations from more than thousand groups are already available for QSO matching. Now, we have a number of DXCCs, which are unique IOTAs. That is the 99 of them. And that's a beauty because Peter the first, if you have that, you don't need to submit anything. Uh, it's an ID, it, it counts for DXCC. It will also come for an IOTA one QSO for, with them, it's one QSO for um, um, for that particular um, Bouvet is the same the same thing. Um, <clears throat> so they're they are 99 of the of the 1136 groups, and and you know there's all sorts of other logic by the by which we offer uh, credits. But ultimately, someone and we have a validation team that I'm in charge of uh, has to go and pick the operations, identify them and talk to the guys, get the proper information, make sure that they, they really trust. They, this is a very, very reliable information. It, the source is reliable, there's no errors, and then that would also be added. But just to give you an example, the, when we say 11,000 operations, back to the LA1AA, that means that any operations that LA1AA might have had from one reference, let's say Europe 46, it, maybe he activated that between all his other activations, let's say 20 times over the last 10 years. That counts as one here. So these 11 operations might be in reality, there are 11,000 of pairs of station uh, activator um, um, uh, IOTA group. But in reality, this could be easy 50,000 or maybe 100,000 of, of, of uh, time windows when certain activities took place. So it was a tremendous amount of time that this involved thousands and thousands and thousands of hours. We build this, this base, this database, which we keep private. It's part of our IP. So unlike the DXCC, we do not provide this for anybody to create its own uh, IOTA statistics. We keep it and we enrich it every single, oh, well, nowadays I, I would like to love it to say every single day, but because there's not so many operations because of the, of the COVID, well, not really every day, but we, we, we do as much as we can, uh, you know, as much as the operations exist. So the, the increase due to this in number of submissions, in number of credits issued has been tremendous. 15 and 20% for something that was stagnant for almost a decade before that. It's in my opinion, very significant since 2016. However, I have to confess it's not here because I don't like to you know, put something bad, but I'm gonna mention to you, I'm gonna throw this a little bit because of the COVID and because of the lack of 
um, significant operations. <laughs> um, while the total number of stations in the annual listing would probably be, you know, within a few more or less than last year, um, we haven't had as many submissions this year, and we haven't definitely had as many credits issued this year. Uh, and I, 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 you know, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but this is what it is. Now, as far as my other expeditions, this is going to be hopefully a little bit easy because there'll be slides, and um, this is maybe the only um, the only uh, writing that I have here. So, me personally, I have been and I continue to be act, uh, very, very interested, heavily interested in in bringing on the air very rare island groups. So, iotas that have not been activated for a long, long time. Why? Um, there are big challenges uh, with this. There are financial com financial commitments. There are all sorts of difficulties um, putting a team together. It's not that easy. Um, which you know, and I love the challenge, and um, I, I also love to to thrill a little bit, just as I have been thrilled so many more, more, more times than I can ever pay back a little bit to 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 the community. So <clears throat> I operated from twenty five iotas, of which nineteen are in the top thirty. Now, to give you a perspective on this is that uh, the ratio of IOTA counters to DXCC as of today is 3.3. So that means that just in terms of rarity for the respective program, being in the top 33 means that you would be only from a rarity point of view, nothing else is similar into the top 10 DXCC. And I, 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 a good friend of mine, Bob, K4UEE, he had a, he made a presentation several years ago that I, you know, I, I was there in, in, uh, in, uh, in Sweden. And it was very interesting because he said 10 of the top 10. Now, I'm going to say that I cannot, nobody can, well, it's very difficult to, to match that. The amount of money, time, effort, uh, skills, and everything else put in that is just phenomenal. But what I can do, I can, I can somehow, from a rarity point of view, come up at some point with a little um, uh, a, a little uh, article in, 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 you know, I, I hopefully I, I'm going to get there, which is going to be 20 of the top 10 DXCC equivalent in terms of rarity IOTAs. <laughs> so I'm, I'm striving for that. So 10 of the groups that I activated um, were, that I was part of activation were for the first time. Um, there were three of them in the Arctic and two of them in the subantarctic area uh, regions. Um, and six of the groups were after a time lapse of 20 to 30 years. So that gives you a little bit of uh, an idea. Now, also, uh, just because sometimes people are maybe not as, you know, they're more, more, more risk adverse or, uh, you know, it's sometimes difficult to find partners for for uh, for 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 such projects. I, I found quite a few and I love them to death, but it's not always easy. So 14 of these expeditions were solo, uh, including eight in the Arctic. It's been a, a tremendous, very super difficult to find. Uh, people want to go to the islands of the Pacific, even if it's if it's sometimes difficult to get there because of logistics. But they they hate to go in the Arctic, particularly. I think I had three oper three expeditions uh, in winter because of the wildlife and because of uh, other other concerns and uh, or other considerations. So you know it is what it is, and I'm I'm really enjoyed the destination, but I'm thrilled by the journey. And from one expedition to another, I enjoyed all these logistics and how many people behind the scenes have to come together in order to produce some success. So very quickly, this is uh, the list of uh, the, the places uh, I operated, uh, both solo and uh, with, with uh, exceptional teammates from. And, um, you know, it gives you a little bit of, um, of, um, of uh, you know, uh, the, the, you, you, these maps are, are, you know, flatting the, the earth to a sort of Mercator projection is not necessarily the best thing, but um, gives you a little bit of an idea. The distances up in the Arctic are huge, are phenomenal. It's just unbelievable. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So um, uh, let's move on. 
And I do like to publish. Um, my idea of publishing is that it's probably part of my scientific background. If you don't publish, uh, it means you don't exist. You haven't done any work interesting. You just community doesn't know of you. But here it goes a little bit more than that. It's 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 the that I, I think that by documenting some of some of these uh, logistics and everything involved, hopefully some people down the road, if they know about this, if they want to read them or they might have read them. And, and, and at some point they, they'll know about them, they have to return to them. They may, they may do better choices than what we did when we embarked on these things. So it, the documentation is truly seen a way in a certain way, sure, I'd like to advertise for the other program. There's a way to uh, encourage people to <clears throat> you know, understand and see, get excited a little bit, but it's also for those who will want to pick up the, the, the baton and eventually, uh, you know, 10 years, 20 years later, whatever, go and do those things. Um, they might say, well, you know, there's some guys, I don't know, you know, can you, you know go and read what they said, because they I, I know that they had some some issues, some problems, there were some logistics. Um, and uh, I have been, uh, I, I'm putting this here because particularly for the for the amateurs in the States, QSD is a big deal. And since since this is not their 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 program, ARRL, you know, have 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 different interests, VOCC, DXCC, and so on and so forth. It was a big big deal for me that that the editors graciously over the 12, 13 years um, decided to to um, uh, put this on the cover of their uh, of their magazines. Uh, we have no power in uh, in influencing that, but I'm 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 thankful to them and to. Uh, you know, for 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 this, you know, it's 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 it, it was pretty cool. So now, uh, very shortly, uh, we're gonna go, hopefully, five minutes or less, to just explain a little bit of the operations. So last year we were in uh, full COVID all year; we couldn't go anywhere, and um, I was very upset. It was a project I put up. Uh, with, it was a very ambitious project with a friend of mine in uh, the Micronesia and that got canceled because I don't have to tell you, you know better than me and you know what, what happened. But by studying this, I kind of grew a little bit upset. I, um, I, I said, well, you know, let's still do something, see if it's possible. And there was a window of opportunity um, when, you know, whatever, whatever COVID restrictions were, the, they, they permitted me to, to, to go in this atoll uh, and, and, and do this operation. It's, it's a very, a difficult piece of, of land to, to, to be on, it has no touristic uh, facilities of any kind. Um, the planes go there in normal time every month. Now they go every whenever, very, very rarely. And it has about 260 people. And uh, I said, well, it's, that's a pretty darn interesting thing. French Polynesia allowed people with, you know, and there was a lot of trouble to get there. Um, they published and uh, this is published, but I'm, I'm not gonna go into that. This is no one to say. So the atoll is about uh, 13 by seven kilometers roughly with a big, big, big central lagoon, lagoon, uh, lagoon. As you see here, this is the place we operated from. It's right here. It's a big island to the north and ton, ton, tons. I think there are about 65 tiny little islets to the south. South and this image was uh, that you saw there was taken from here and it, it goes right in this direction. Um, so <clears throat> this is the this is the antenna setup. As you see, the antenna broke at some point because somebody decided to give me more privacy and they closed this. They, they, there, was a, there was a there was a hard um, 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 uh, steel door uh, that that rolled here and uh, it's a funny story, but. Uh, these area, these radials, uh, which are also anchors, um, they are always trapped in, trapped upon by by the the the, 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 the when, whenever the the people who who came to 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 to, to feed me uh, and leave uh, you know the meals there, uh, they will always be coming with their dogs, and the dogs uh, you know trapped into this so many times they they uh, I, I put some um, some reef rocks on top, but. Uh, in, in the end, uh, unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize that that happened. Um, <clears throat> the rope that's right at the end of it kind of brushed against that reef rock, which is just as sharp as you can imagine. And after a while, the antenna fell and um, there was not in the wind, there was nothing like that, but, uh, and, and, and this thing broke and you know had to be fixed. But the beauty with this type of antenna, which offers you the possibility to connect here and introduce and, and, and go from one bend to another, 
is that it's tuned, it's man-made, it, it's tuned, that you don't need an antenna tuner. You will have one between 1.1 uh, 1, 1 to 1.3 uh, of FWR everywhere in, in, in uh, any bands you operate from, from up and down to 40 meters. This is the setup, the, the equipment, and um, interestingly on the island, there's a gentleman who, who has been here for about 15, 16 years, but he's very frail, he's 84 now, his equipment doesn't work. Uh, it's now used to mention a lot of things about it, unfortunately. And uh, I, I tried to see if there was a possibility to use his two element beam. I don't even know if that works. And his um, once upon a time rotary, uh, ro uh, rotatable dipole, dipole, which now is just, they're both fixed on a certain direction. Uh, but uh, with COVID, I couldn't live with him. There was no way to pull those things out. It was just logistically impossible. And, um, you know, as I said, he's, uh, he's in a very, very, very frail condition and, um, uh, you know, it's too bad. Now, this is a little bit of the stats uh, and I'm gonna point your attention to Asia, Europe, North America, roughly in the 25 to 35%, which is kind of what we'd like to see targeting this, this main uh, areas of the world. I would have liked to have more Asians but unfortunately, as you can see, um, uh, you know, I, this is just an example for Japanese guys, but because Japan was, was a lot easier from a propagation point of view, longer part of the day on different bands, uh, these are only the, the, the you know, about 45% of the stations, 55% uh, of the stations um, worked as once. 45% uh, of them worked as more and I understand. On, on I only put the bands here, but in some cases there were also the SSB, the CW, and uh, this is a place difficult to reach. Uh, it's it's you know it's kind of logistically challenging. I don't think that the current ham will operate again, uh, unfortunately. And uh, uh, he operated a couple of times, but because his equipment failed, uh, he operated maybe for half a year and at the rate of every now and then making you know two to five QSOs. And, uh, and then um, followed by, you know, maybe seven years of, you know, you know being, 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 being unable to, 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 to get on the air. So um, I, I wanted to do as many stations as possible to, to give them as, as much of a chance we could. So we ended up with uh, 3,700 stations out of 5,800 contacts. Uh, but when people are very close and they start punching you with big, big super signals, um, you know, this is probably in the end why we ended up with 23% of the contacts, uh, you know, with, with Asia. Conditions were, were very good with them. So just to give a little bit of an example. Now, as we move on, uh, obviously, uh, JA and uh, United States and Japan had about 55% of all the, um, all the stations and about 58% of all the contacts. Big stations, skilled operators, uh, powerful equipment, um, big chasers, big DXers, um, relatively closer than Europe. Um, <clears throat> and uh, well, that's kind of the result of it. Um, so in the, this, in the month of uh, November, December, end of November, early December of 2018, together with a good friend of mine, Adrian, um, uh, from, from New York, uh, we embark on a project to uh, operate from two uh, extremely uh, remote islands uh, or island groups in at the southeast end of 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 the uh, the same uh, French archipelago. <clears throat> so Morani was in was a group that's never been activated; has one single uh, counter, and Maria Est um, was just the closest point uh, to get to this archipelago. Uh, which is called Action and has not been act operated from for 28 and a half years at the time. So let's say roughly 30 years. And uh, the logistics were particularly difficult because these two atolls uh, are having closed lagoons. So in order to get to the land, you have to somehow uh, maneuver uh, through the reef and then when eventually the wind will change, you have to take all your materials, all the boat, the boats, whatever you have, dinghies, transport them to the other side uh, and then leave from there. And uh, 
the difficulty is also that you cannot anchor. Uh, the reef is the 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 the, the ocean bottom is so deep that you cannot anchor. So you have to have someone manning the boat at all times, the big boat. And the original program, the original schedule was that we would uh, get on a dinghy and we would cross the reef and we would disembark all the equipment. They would go back and we'll do this three, four times uh, pacing against the wave because as you, some of you, or maybe all of you know that depending on the ocean currents and also sort of weather conditions, every one in five, seven or more waves would be a big wave. So you have to catch that wave to take you over the reef. But if you fail or you're, you know, your heart is not good and you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you, you might just, that might be your, you, you might just be your, your burial place there, right? So uh, a good friend of the, uh, the skipper who was a friend of mine, a French guy, um, you know, who's, who's, uh, who's from uh, Gamby Islands, um, he said that's the most stupid thing he's ever heard of. And he said, these guys, I have no idea what they're doing. I have to come with them. And he was our savior because with his experience and the captain's ability to um, <clears throat> maneuver that boat and our determination and uh, I guess in the end tenacity, we were able to do the project. So to give an example, um, you know, we went, we, we scooped the place and then we, um, we had to uh, go across at the end because the winds changed, the winds changed. Um, I just linked the dots. The dots were GPS uh, um, uh, timing, but obviously we didn't go through the reef. We, we had to go around, but since we already had them every now and then, this is just for me to, to show the path. Um, and then we went to from Morane to uh, Maria Est. Uh, when we went to Maria Est, we had to surround it to see a place for landing. Then we decided we're going to land here. And then at the end of the day, uh, when we had to leave, we had to cross again and then go over the reef again and from there go back. Uh, it, was a, it was a challenging thing, just a couple of photos to have. It's difficult to take photos. This was taken by, uh, by, the, by the captain's wife who was uh, keeping the boat, uh, staying on the boat. It's difficult when you do all these things, even with, you know, to, to, to have photos, you may have a go camera or, or or something, but uh, you know there are a number of reasons why we decided we're not going to do that. Um, so you build your 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 tent, uh, you operate. This is Adrian at dawn, and uh, he's myself. Uh, we had a um, this is an expert 1.5 uh, kilowatt uh, amplifier that we probably pushed it up to about a kilowatt, uh, and this is uh, a KPA uh, 500 uh, from um, Aircraft, which we use it at full power. And um, what's not seen here is that this tent uh, only was for one person. This was the sleeping tent. Uh, so we only slept one person at a time. Uh, it was guaranteed that we'll have one station on the air. And if the conditions were poor, I don't know, the guy would have to look at the log, do something because there was no room for him to sleep on the chair. Um, <clears throat> okay. So then when we left, this is the remnants of, the ten, the, the, of our tents. We're still doing that. And little by little, things come across. And then it looks like it's an empty thing, but it isn't. This is very shallow reef. Uh, it, it's just as sharp as the blade. So we, we, we were uh, very heavy uh, boots. And uh, we swam, but with heavy boots. Uh, and uh, you know we got on skates. But once you go here, the waves come against you. And you have to push the boat, the little dinghy, and I'll show you in a in a in next. So now we move from Morani, we are to Maria Est, pretty much the same thing. We 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 set up camp. We have uh, two uh, antennas of the same type, the multiband verticals, uh, with three radials. Um, we we were operating great, uh, no problem. This is Bernard, the native who was our savior. Uh, it's a, a true Robinson Crusoe. Uh, he not only had the skills to, 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 to bring us and to pace us against the wave and do all these things, but he was an exceptional, um, was an exceptional fisherman. Not only that he was an exceptional fisherman, but he was an absolutely exceptional cook. So we had every single day, we had a lot of provisions, which are kind of rations. We never ate them, never ate them, except for the sprinkle uh, chips. Uh, everything else was untouched because he fed us all the time. It's true, it was kind of always sort of fish and 
uh, other marine uh, life, but um, but uh, you know was uh, was so much better than anything else that we had. And here's the, an example of carrying the boat over the reef. Uh, it was probably about in the in the sun. Must have been 45 C in the sun. You know, uh, it was just burning. Um, and um, this thing was kind of heavy. We we not that great. Uh, hams are kind of operators. They're not necessarily. Uh, you know, either, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, Navy SEALs or uh, some big athletes. So uh, it was difficult. And as I said, the scoop was that you have to push the boat with some load and with the, 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 the captain inside who's going to go and disembark it to uh, on the big boat. Uh, but if the engine drops on you, uh, and, and, you know, you're kind of getting into a dangerous situation. You have to be prepared to have the cold blood and just uh, um, put the paddle down and, and go hard at it and, uh, and uh, get out of the situation, uh, which happened. Then, of course, once that happened, we had to wait several hours for, for, for him to fix the engine so that he could come back. And then the whole thing would start again. Um, so <clears throat> this is the... Um, this is the um, a part of the uh, of the stats. I, I know the lot of numbers. I apologize, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to guide you very quickly. This is um, this is uh, Morane. Uh, this is the rare one. We made about uh, 7,500 contacts, and this is uh, uh, this is uh, Maria S. We made about 5,100 conditions. Actually, propagation conditions changed a bit. We worked just as hard, but. Uh, signals, our signals are probably weaker, uh, not because of the distance, just propagation conditions. And uh, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to ask you to to have a look at Asia, Europe, and North America. So having from that part of the world, 33%, and I don't really see what's here, but I'm sure it's a good percentage with Europe as well. Um, it's you know it, we we consider this a success, and we consider that uh, we have been able to give. Um, uh, a lot of stations a chance to um, to uh, to to have a go at at, at this at this particular location, Morani. Both of them haven't been activated, and probably won't activate it for a significant period of time. Uh, as usual, <coughs> uh, CW is is the way to go. Um, initially, uh, from Morani, because conditions, propagation conditions were a little bit better, we, we had about 10% of our contacts in SSB, uh, which was largely equal between Europe, North America, and Asia. Uh, but uh, we, that dropped to about 5% for, um, for um, uh, and again, for, um, for uh, uh, Maria Est for uh, Oceania 113. Um, as far as the total number of stations, you remember the previous figures? Well, about 50% of the stations and 54% of the stations on the two. So let's say about 50, 55% were again from Japan and uh, North, North, uh, United States. Another proof that this is where the core <laughs> of the uh, <clears throat> Um, of, of, of per, per, per DXCC, the, the core number of uh, uh, chases would be from. <coughs> now, um, although keep in mind, Europe, very, very strong, lots of DXCCs counted like the whole United States and then, yeah, then would be commensurable, the commensurate. Um, I, I still have a, you know, I, I have another three, four minutes. So I'm going to very quickly uh, tell you about this particular operation, which was uh, in Little Diomede. Little Diomede, it's um, the last piece of land in our, um, uh, you know, before the international zone and little big Diomede belongs to Russia. It's on the other side. Uh, this has been last operated from about uh, seven, eight years before my trip. And uh, it's about 230 kilometers, uh, maybe, no, sorry, 250, 200, uh, maybe about 200 miles, let's say, you're, you're with miles, yeah, about 200 miles from Nome. And, uh, um, and uh, there's some reasons why I, I really want to go there. It's a little bit of a medical place, in my opinion. And um, uh, this is the helicopter, this is the ride, and this is coming from, uh, from North America. Um, there's a small community on the other side of the island. And behind it is the big diomede. Um, why at winter? Uh, at winter, because in the summer, um, 
the only way to get up there is um, the, the, the locals are, uh, well, the, the, the conditions are, are um, uh, there's no water. Uh, you know, the, there's a facility, there's a, there's a school that operates in, the, in winter, but it's, it's off in summer. And school has a particular way of doing logistics for you that uh, is, 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 uh, is to be used if you can. Um, they haven't been able, our previous uh, operators, uh, previous attempts have not been able to reach the top in the summer. So I said to myself, not that it cannot be reached, but uh, they required logistics to do that, maybe helicopter rides, all these kind of things. And I decided that's too expensive. So my plan was to uh, operate either with a skidoo or a skidoo uh, or a or a or a you know some some um, uh, some sled. Um, <clears throat> take it with the natives. Uh, make sure that you we protect it from the polar bears. Take it to the um, uh, northwest corner from where you can see North America. Why? Because this mountain here, it's total opacity to North America. It's just unbreakable. Um, and uh, it didn't work out. It didn't work out because um, <clears throat> usually this thing is iced. There was a lot of snow, but there was not sufficiently cold. This was not completely iced. You'll see in a minute. This is the community, about 260 souls. Maybe, no, no, sorry, sorry, what I'm talking about, about, um, no, about 60 souls, about 60 people live here. This is the school, okay, um, this is the gymnasium, this is the, uh, the sports uh, place, and you know, this is the school, this is the water purification plant, which only operates, believe it or not, when the school is open. And, uh, <clears throat> um, and uh, this is Big Diomede, and you can see that uh, all, all this, can, this is the seashore, uh, but this was unstable. All this stuff would break on and on. Uh, the, 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 the locals tried, it was impossible to reach. Uh, There's no snowmobile that worked and with a sled and uh, it was impossible. They deemed it, deemed it impossible to reach uh, that place. This is, uh, um, there were, the, 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 cur the, the winds were just absolutely pounding all the time. And uh, the amount of snow is just phenomenal. When it snowed, when it snowed, it was like thousands, tens of thousands, millions of tiny little needles that will hit you. Hmm. Operations, but uh, this was just a, just a different thing. The wind make it so 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 difficult. This is the amount of snow to give you an example. It's just a meters of snow. And uh, <clears throat> taking the antenna down, putting the antenna up, it broke several times. The good thing about this type of uh, thing is that it's so easy to repair. Just put some, just some, uh, get some, some wires and you'll fix it. You'll replace the whole thing. If you want, you'd go home, but it's easy to, to repair on spot. Um, I wore ski masks because it was just, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, very, <laughs> I, I never thought it's going to be quite like that. Now, the results are, uh, I stayed here longer but, uh, than anywhere else, but unfortunately, because I blocked there another six days due to the fact that, seven days, sorry, because, uh, you know, the wind, the fog is, was such that the, the helicopter couldn't land. But I only be, been able to make 2,600 contacts. The propagation up north was, was not that easy. Still 58 DXCCs when I was just to, to, for a comp, for, to compare, uh, with, when I were operating from Tata Koto in November last year, I, there were 99 DXCCs. So, you know, um, and of course, the big disappointment was North America. Uh, so that's not how it should have been. It was not what I intended to do, but we ended up with just about 100 stations or something that we made in North America. So uh, not very good. Right, so maybe less than that, or 50, 60 stations or something. It's not even in the top 10, the DXCCs. So that's a no-no, but it, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I think I'm gonna go one or two minutes uh, below my allocated time, apologize. Um, but this is closer to, to you. This is the Tillamook Rock, which is a lighthouse, well, used to be a lighthouse, lots of stories about it. It's a, another mythical place. It's a place of legend. Um, the, 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 the most expensive lighthouse in the United States to operate at, the, at its time. It took three years to build. Um, you can see why. 
Um, and, um, <clears throat> you know, at, at some point in, in, the, in the late 60s or early 70s was, was, was purchased by, by somebody. Um, it was no longer used as a lighthouse, uh, an entrepreneur who decided that, you know, she was involved with, with this type of business, was, was very young, there was a lot of uh, romantic side to this, but she thought that uh, she would transform this into a columbarium. She had some friends who wanted to, to have their remains at sea so that never ever anybody, you know, disturbs them. Uh, did the plan didn't quite succeed financially, didn't quite succeed as a business plan, but as a result of that was closed to public uh, by, 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 by the status of operations. So one ham got the chance to operate from there uh, for a few hours, uh, I don't know, like 21 years ago uh, to the date of our operation. So it took about seven years. Uh, my friend Yuri, uh, <clears throat> you know, finally succeeded through, through lawyers. And it's a long, long, long story to get in touch with the owner and convince the owner that we can help if they have any repairs, if they have anything they want to do, we'll pay for them to have their people um, deployed there, transported there with one condition, they have to allow us to operate. Keep in mind, everything that is outside of, of the lighthouse belongs to the, is administered by, by some conservation area, whatever. And um, with her permission and only with her permission, because it's a private land, we could have gotten there. So we struggled, it took us also months and months. Uh, you know, I was heavily involved in the process, both to, to arrange the logistics with her and with the helicopters companies, we had to change about three of them because you know, they kind of picked that this is a good opportunity to make a lot of money. And by the way, a project like this costs about $22,000 US when everything is done. Uh, a project like the one that I and uh, that Yuri and I made in, uh, you know, in uh, from from uh, from southeastern end of uh, of um, of uh, French Polynesia costs about twenty two thousand dollars US as well. So they're kind of expensive projects, but we still want to limit that just in case uh, we won't get the support. People won't kick in, and uh, it's fun. It's fun, but we only go there for uh, three four days, so you know it's it's kind of expensive. So um, uh, we had uh, 10, trans 10 helicopter uh, runs to, to bring everything in and evacuate. And um, um, <clears throat> uh, when we got there, obviously the helicopter noise made all the sea lions, there are hundreds and hundreds of them to, to go down the stairs and, and into the sea, but, but they were still, uh, these are not the sea lions, but uh, they were kind of like, you know, uh, kind of them. But because they broke over the years, uh, the door, uh, 38 of them were stuck inside the lighthouse. And it took us more than four hours, maybe five hours to be able to slowly kind of scare them out. Um, and until that happened, we couldn't do a thing because we didn't want them to entangle in our equipment and destroy it. We didn't want them to potentially get hurt. That would be big, big non or big trouble. Um, and um, so, you know, it, unfortunately, by the time they were out, the smell uh, of ammonia was so unbearable that the guys who were supposed to provide, uh, you know, some work uh, for the for the lighthouse for the for the monument uh, decided they're not going to stay, and they went out. Um, now we said, well, we're going to bear with that. We will have our tents in front. So equipment does the deliver. We build our tents here. And we had uh, <clears throat> two stations here and one station here in the small one. Uh, and this is uh, Yuri pacing and very happy that, you know, we don't have very good anchor, but we're running. So, you know, let's, let's keep going, keep it going. Uh, we started uh, low with one antenna multi-band vertical, then we installed the other antenna. This one was for 40 meters and this one we used it for 20 and 30 meters the, the first day, but then the night fell and we thought that we're not gonna have enough time to put uh, a two element beam. So we left it for the next day. The next day we moved this antenna kind of in that corner, somewhere in this, in this side, and we installed the beam here. Uh, unfortunately, 
they were uh, very, very uh, poor conditions to do pretty much anything. And we were very light because of uh, the amount of gear that the helicopter could have transported. We've been at the max and, and we still had to make 10 transports uh, by the end of it. Um, <clears throat> so this was the antenna. We later used the multiband vertical only for 30 meters. Uh, and this is uh, Sandro so happy after he found out that hours after putting this together, not working, he had to dismount everything. And there was a, 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 just a connection that was, was soldered wrongly. And he was so happy that he found it. It took him a phenomenal amount of time to put this together with a, with a couple of the other guys. And I would just keep staying on 20 meters with a, 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 a multi-band vertical before we moved it to, to 30 to, to keep the station on. Uh, but in the end, this is the, the, big, um, the big IR for 40 meters. And we also use it for, for 17 because the other two antennas was left as such, 30 meters, 20 meters, 40 and 17. And this photo, uh, the one down here, uh, this is Adrian, Sandro and, uh, and I, uh, this was taken just before the, tent, the tents collapsed. Uh, we had very strong winds, very strong uh, rain, and the tents were not, we couldn't anchor them. This was, um, this was reinforced concrete and we couldn't drill into it. Uh, they don't, didn't allow us to do that. So, and you know, we had drones and things kind of spying on us all the time, checking on us. Okay, let's be politically correct. They were checking on us what, what we're doing there. Um, so the tents collapsed um, and uh, so this is the second day. And then we spent, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the second night and the third uh, inside the lighthouse. Uh, we couldn't care of any smell. Uh, we just lay down some tarps. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, obviously, the air kind of breathed a little bit, but it was just, just incredible. And we kept operating as much as we could. Uh, we knew that it's going to take a very long time before some other team, some other guy will have a chance to, to go and operate. And uh, this is the log, uh, you know, this time we have Asia, Europe and North America. E Europe was 21%, not stunning, but you know, it was, it was okay. Um, <clears throat> and we had about 3,300 contacts, about 2,200 stations again, um, J and K as part of the QSOs, you know, uh, they make uh, a good chunk and again, uh, a good, good, good chunk of the uh, of the total number of stations. Um, this time we did operate a little bit in FT8. Uh, Yuri was the guy who handled the FT8, but um, because we kept the bigger antennas and the bigger powers on on CW, uh, at, at, at the, when, when the time was right for 20 meters, we obviously use CW or SSB. So FT8 was a marginal. Uh, type of mode that we would use when pretty much everything was closed and we still try to push a few more contacts. That's kind of the, 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 the psychology. So I, I end this, sorry for, um, uh, for it being a little bit longer, but uh, I, I cannot, I have to thank uh, very many uh, groups, not as many as the DXCC's uh, sponsors, but a lot of groups, uh, German DX Foundation, European DX Foundation, um, uh, Island Radio Expedition, which is a North American organized uh, group, uh, Swiss DX Foundation, and so on and so forth. I'm sure you're familiar with this, uh, with these groups, uh, or most of them, uh, for for their uh, graciously and uh, you know we're grateful for them supporting these operations and also um, hundreds and hundreds of individuals, donors who. Uh, whom we, we, we couldn't have uh, done. This is not just for this, but for all sorts of other operations. I, I didn't mention this, but uh, the operations that I have been part of, the 25 that I mentioned, total 300, over $300,000 of, uh, of costs. One operation to Antipodes Island, which is Zulu Lima 9 Alpha, was $52,000. So, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's not in the same range as I guess Bouvet, Peter the First, in terms of costing and so on and so forth, the logistics. But we don't bring twenty people. We we try to minimize, uh, you know, and 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 hopefully mi minimize the costs and hopefully uh, allow the community to support things like this a little more often they would do otherwise. So, to give you an example, Bouvet is ranked 493 in terms of demand for the IOTA uh, members. What? 
So it's not a very high up thing. Now, because we only have 4,000 members, like I, for example, I still need Bouvet on 160, on 80 meters and on 10. Uh, but many of the guys who are part of this IOTA have been there for 40 years, 50 years. So they worked pretty much anything under the sun. And, uh, you know, W1JR Joe, you might be familiar with his call sign, who has just about, I think it's one of the, it's not the top, but it's one of the, I don't know, 390 DXCCs or something like that. Um, uh, you know, he, he still needs a number of, of IOTA groups. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, anyway, um, I'm going to stop here. I, I hope that I didn't put everyone to sleep. It's still early there. Otherwise, if it would be my time, some of you would have been put to sleep. But um, uh, as I've been the exos, you have to keep an ear to the ground. <laughs> um, but next time, you, you will hear some of these call signs, which might be um, unusual or may look to be, and you would see a pileup. Say, why? Why is a pileup? These guys operate from French Polynesia. Oh, it's such big a deal from French Polynesia. Well, it might just be somebody on one of these rocks or, or one of these atolls that is difficult to reach. And um, some people it would be a celebration for Iota because they may not have been activated in a long, long, long time. So. Um, you know, uh, there were other times, I mean, I've done a lot of other things and many, many other people have, are, are, are constantly uh, trying to, to come up and do some excitement. Um, and I, I hope that, that, that more of you will uh, eventually uh, have now a little bit of a better understanding if, if you haven't already had one about why people would, would, would stay in the pileups for uh, Tatakoto. What's such a big deal? You know, I could have stayed there another week. Maybe I should have in view of all these COVID things. And probably the pileups would have been just still, you know, I, I worked 1500, uh, 1,500 contacts in the first 24 hours. For a tiny little station like, like that in the middle of the ocean, it's not that bad. Next day, I worked 1,200. Then the propagations changed a bit, but I still continue to, uh, I, I didn't go, I, 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 you know, despite all the, all the, most of the of the guys doing islands of the year of this type of operations that are only once in so often um, would 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 try to stay awake as much as they can even if if the, the performance is degraded because they still think that they might be able to do a little more a few more another 60 contacts another 40 contacts and you know another 40 guys will be happy so sorry that's uh, that's uh, I'm gonna have to uh, put a stop here. Uh, I apologize again for running a little bit long, and um, uh, it's difficult sometimes when uh, uh, people are passionate about something to stop them, right? So, <laughs> thank you. That was very, very good. Thank you, Jim. How do I get back? Yeah, thank you, Caesar. Oh yeah, thank you guys. Uh, if any, I don't know if you still have, uh, if there's still time for questions, but uh, you know, if you don't, uh, if you don't have now, don't be shy anytime. Uh, not about my operations, but about or anybody else's, how, how this IOTA works and, and, and on and on and on. And we'll, we'll be, um, uh, there's no, there's no, uh, IOTA is not a, a, a club or association in the sense of uh, providing, uh, requiring an annual fee. The fee is similar to DXCC. If you want to make a submission, there's going to be a fee. Uh, and if you want an award, it's going to be a fee. As a matter of fact, we subsidize, <coughs> believe it or not, both the, the, the big uh, Yoda trophy, that's the one uh, for 1,000 and the one for, um, for um, the, the plaque of excellence. Uh, subsidizing doesn't mean that uh, we, we just give it to the chaser for free. Uh, they still have to pay, but because we wanted to have something unique, it, we thought that in the end, we, we kind of ended up with something that's a little expensive, um, but we still wanted to promote that. So we, we bear some of the cost. IOTA is now for the first time ever in a position to make substantial donations to, uh, we think we, we're gonna pick one of the large organizations uh, which are supportive of IOTA, uh, of IOTA projects and have them uh, not us administering that, not to be in a, any potential conflict of interest, but also because 
they already have uh, things in place. They know what they're doing. They've done it so many times. Uh, let them administer this. But we think that our, our, uh, our, our uh, just to give an idea, I'm not going to put any numbers there because we, you know, they, can't, they are approved, but, you know, we, we let the, the right time to, for them to, to, to be announced. Uh, they will probably double the funds that would have been otherwise administered. And we intend to do it that on, a, on an annual basis. Uh, unfortunately, because we are a non-for-profit organization, we can only do that based on requests, based on need. In other words, the organization we're going to pick has to say, well, I, I, I need funds because I, I, this is the thing. I, I need the funds. And then we can, we can do that. Unfortunately, although we approved this in, in 2020, we haven't versed anything because there was hardly anything to sponsor. So, but what I'm trying to say is that um, <clears throat> for the first time, our goal was uh, the previous organization, the previous, uh, I guess, the previous administrators, the RSGB, they didn't decide to do that. They preferred to stay out of all this stuff and use the money in different ways. Our main role was to develop an IOTA, a, a, a management software as part of our IT that would enable something similar. It's not the same thing because we, we take an advantage of, of Clublog and, and LFDW uh, operations, but they also have a management software that they had to, to, to pay for in order to be able to administer the program, not just to offer you uh, the QSOMATIC. And uh, for that, we also had to uh, to, to spend money. Once that money was um, was spent, we 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 every year we we put some money into the software development. But uh, we have been able to seek to to uh, to uh, have sufficient funds to think now of actually being uh, sponsors ourselves of this beautiful activity that that we all enjoy and all our members. So in a way, by participating to this program. And by, by claiming, sub, making submissions and claiming your words, you will be indirectly uh, supporting other expeditions, whether you want individually to, to do that by throwing, I don't know, $5, $7, $2, $100, that'll be your choice. But different than the XCC, I'm not blaming the XCC, you know, but I'm, I'm just trying to explain. The XCC doesn't support by itself operations, doesn't have a fund allocated for operations. They are a for-profit organization, same as RSGB. We are a non-for-profit organization. We do not pay any of our directors, managers, or whatever. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit of a different setting. We're not in the same money as they do, as they are, but it's fine. But I, what I'm trying to explain is that our dedication is for the program and we want to support There's a strong commitment. The, the board of directors already approved the money to go, but because the organization, and I even know who, who the organization is that, that we picked to, that will administer, that, that will uh, dispense of the money to, to, to expeditions, but there are no expeditions. So uh, this is why we, we actually can't, couldn't, uh, couldn't spend the money last year that we wanted to. And that's a little bit of a big deal because, uh, you know, the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the tax authority in England mm -hmm. will come after us and say, well, what are you doing with all this money? Well, we, we park the money because of this. We have to explain this to them because money has, has to be spent. And <laughs> we, we just don't want to waste the money. The money has to be spent in something that supports the activity for which, which we, 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 we want to encourage. So, I'm just mentioning this, maybe, I don't know, maybe or every now and then, a couple percent, three percent of people might be enticed to make a good gesture. It's, it's fun to chase, and it's also uh, maybe putting a little bit into uh, <laughs> continuing the, I don't know, I, I use, I'd like to say continuing the dream, because sometimes, uh, you know, people dream about these operations, bring, dream about contacting those rare uh, stations, rare uh, places, and um, yeah, we kind of got to keep the dream alive. We got to keep the dream alive that somebody <laughs> will, will get one day to Bouvet. Got to keep the dream alive that sometimes that, that one day uh, Papa Five will be back on the air. Got to got to keep the dream alive that the three Iotas in Libya eventually will be activated. So yeah, we hope to. Uh, I, I know that we have more pressing moments such as uh, 
keeping alive the fact that we can be, get get our back be, uh, get our life back to normal <laughs> in this COVID. But um, you know, we we have to. Uh, I, I think all of us have to uh, keep dreaming a little bit in our lives, and uh, you don't have to dream about this. But uh, uh, I'm just you know, we some of us are. <laughs> so. Well, thank you, Susie. That was great. Um, I had one question. Uh, sure. What do you think the impact of FP8 is going to be in the future for IOTA? Um, we have, okay, once we, uh, once we enabled, uh, once we start enabling this, um, <clears throat> this um, um, QSO, uh, QSO matching, it was a tremendous effort. The effort is ongoing, but it was so much harder. It's like in anything else, it's, it's so much easier if somebody uh, puts a puts a, a, a big uh, a big weight here, and you have to support it. Then, if you have to 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 raise it, the gravity will just you know have to do a lot of work to to raise it from 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 down the bottom here up here, right? So we are no longer in that process. But what I want to mention directly to your question is that uh, we have already have once we finished uh, and and uh, 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 bringing along also the log of the world uh, uh, logs. Uh, we had two submissions, two submissions um, of over 750, that's the plaque of excellence, IOTAs, for the first time. This was the first day of submissions, okay? Before checking anything, they were by QSO matching. So we have two people who now, two chasers. I know it doesn't look like big, but for us, for me, it's a big deal because there are also some other guys who claim that th IOTA 300, IOTA 400, IOTA 500, IOTA 600. Now I'm kind of dreaming that one day there will be some who will come, one guy who will come and say, well, I have one, you know, 1,000, it's all by QSO matching. Now, when they do this, uh, nowadays, a lot of those new guys who make new submissions may have IO, uh, FD8 uh, claims. IOTA has a particular rigid, uh, if you prefer this word, I would prefer rather conservative, to use the word conservative way of treating remote operations. So for example, uh, you cannot operate remotely at this time, this is not allowed uh, to operate remotely from an island. Now we know by the great points, we don't have official information that there are some guys, particularly in Scandinavia, could be in other parts as well, who simply cannot, the city is just making things impossible for them to operate. We're not talking about, we're talking about the noises, we're not talking about um, the fact that, um, you know, they, they can't put up antennas, no. Uh, so they have, some of them have cottages on islands and they're not that far. They're actually not that far. They could be just, you know, sort of uh, 100 miles, maybe less than 100 miles. But this is not okay with IOTA. You have to have everything on the island for that to count. Because otherwise, we think there will be in a situation where somebody could install, let's say, on Bouvet something, but it's not going to operate forever because the, the climate is rush, is rough, but uh, it might operate for a while. And that's not that wasn't the way in which original IOTA program has been thought out. Okay, but by the same token, we are very perceptive that generations change, people change. And the most important thing is to have a use of the frequencies, have people uh, excited about something, dreaming about whatever it is that they like to dream. And if they like to dream in, in the amateur radio world, let them dream. There's, you know, so we don't want to take back their dreams. We realized that a number of chasers uh, who had to spend a tremendous amount of money over the years to get their collection, like myself, to get their collection of QSL cards from thousand or more uh, uh, island groups, say, well, all, and all these guys now are doing this for nothing. Well, they're not doing it for nothing. I know people who are continuing to collect um, their QSL card, just like they always did. They sponsor operations. They sponsor my operations. They sponsor operations I've been associated with. So I know that for a fact. But they want to treasure those. They don't want to put them at risk, mailing them somewhere for a checkpoint to look at them and then send them back, not to mention the additional cost. So we have to understand 
there, there are guys in our community who refuse to sponsor operations if those guys operate FD8. I, I know the names. They're famous activators. They're reputed, uh, they're, they're reputable chasers. And I'm trying to convince them that FD8 is nothing else than, a, than, than another language. But, uh, and you know, if you know more languages in principle, you might be better off. Not always, because somebody can speak another language. You, you might know seven and, you know, they, you know, but they, they not, not his language and it's still useless. It's metaphorically speaking, you know, the propagation may be such that you still can make the contact. Um, but uh, we are afraid, of course, that the nature of the game will change because FT8, it's currently sort of untraceable. And it is my understanding that people are working, the FT8 gang are working to uh, the possibility of somehow encoding something that would uh, be um, certifying that 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 station is is not operated from the other end of the planet or you know under different rules. Uh, so I'm not sure how that is going to come together, but we are very much aware of this. Currently, any digital contact counts as any contact in ham radio bands accepted in, uh, in, in, in between the two countries, uh, between the two DXCCs that did, or countries or whatever, administrations that the contact is are, are, are you know, for example, if there's an island in the United States and, and um, uh, United States and Canada <laughs> allows the use of that particular band, let's say 60 meters, then the contact counts. If that is between Canada and Australia and Australia doesn't allow uh, operation on, on 60 meters, well, they won't count. You know, and we track that rig. We, we have very precise information. We update it all the time. It's all in the software uh, to track that. But uh, at current at this current uh, point in time, if somebody claims uh, contact with an FT8, it's credited just like it would be with SSB or any other thing. Uh, Caesar, we we probably got to get on with. We got some other stuff to do here. So sure. uh, sorry, guys. Hey, one more quick question, Caesar. Can you hear me? I tried to be quicker, yeah. Yeah, you, you mentioned the uh, the academic phenomenon of publishing or perishing. Publish or perish is what we call it here. Um, are you, a, a, you are you an academic scientist of some sort? What, what, oh, yeah. What, oh, yeah. Yeah. What, I, I, yeah. What, you, what, is, what is your uh, field? What is your uh, specialty? OK, uh, I'll try to make it short, because now you'll, they, they, you know, you, 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 this is, this is, you know, it's comparable to ham radio, OK? It's like, it's a, it's a passion. I, I have been a, a ham for 52 years now, yeah. uh, of which only 25 in Canada. But um, uh, I am, by background, a physicist. Uh -huh. And I have a PhD in, um, uh, in seismology. Uh, my master was in physics of the Earth. And I am, um, I have been a, uh, an associate editor uh, with the most prestigious journal now domain. That's the Bulletin of the American uh, uh, Seismological Society. It's actually uh, named the BSSA, Bulletin of the Seismological Society of America. I've been for 21 years. And um, I was a professor at Queen's University, uh, initially in the geological sciences, but then something happened. Uh, one of those um, right time, you know, being at the right time, right place. And the mining industry uh, thought of using this to produce some kind of a CAT scan of the fractures that exist uh, when they blast, when they do uh, mining underground for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, together with a couple of friends and, and, and uh, colleagues, uh, we founded a company which, you know, Later, we brought more individuals, um, more, more partners, and the company grew. And we had at some point about 155 employees operating in, uh, we, with a small group in the States that actually moved to oil and gas, doing monitoring of hydrofrac. So what we do, we, we, we tell them in real time um, when they have to stop, because from then on, they're just pouring water and um, uh, sand. We don't tell them, the software tells them that that's when they, they have to frack the ground, they have to crack the ground in order for, for the oil to, to, to be driven towards some pockets from where they pump them out. Um, but the same techniques 
you know, initially we started in mining, we de developed a number of things, then we, we, we start getting involved in oil and gas. And then at some point, um, all these techniques from oil and gas became very much important for, for mining because nowadays people don't mine how they used to do. Going underground, picking up some um, concentrate, some high concentration. And now, nowadays, what they like to do, they like to find places where they can mine the whole damn thing from the uh, 2,500 meters, 2,000 meters, 3,000 meters, all the way up to surface. It's called caving. So, in order to do that, they have to crack the rock, they have to break the rock in a certain way that allows them to softly. Uh, 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 you know, uh, catch it, uh, 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 drop it to the bottom, then they extract it, then it just goes to surface, drops again, takes it to, and, and so on and so forth. And that fracking, which is hydraulic fracturing, it's the same thing that they use in, in oil. However, it has nothing to do with oil. What you do with that, you, that you, you use a technique to fracture appropriately for the type of rock, uh, you don't want to have big chunks. You don't have to have too small chunks. You want to have the proper chunks that would allow you an operation flawlessly. You don't want the, 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 the rocks to hang in there and at some point to fall and uh, wipe everybody through, through this uh, piston type uh, uh, you know, pressure. Uh, and we monitor that. So we, wow. we install sensors. Now, I'm out of the business for a number of years because at some point, was too big for us, became too risky, became too much of an involvement. And we're not the, uh, uh, you know, some guys are uh, in the stratosphere and I'm literally talking about Elon Musk. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we were not at that level. We were just some uh, uh, scientists who were driving this by the seats of their pants. And, uh, you know, we, we decided to divest from this, you know, and um, uh, we just, uh, uh, I guess, each one went our merry way. I, I continued to, I, I went back to university for a couple of years, but then um, I, you know, age, and there are all sorts of new things in the universities nowadays that kind of, I just thought that it's, um, I don't know, it, it's probably too much for me. Uh, yeah, I, scientist, I'm too much politics. And I just, I just didn't think, it, you know, Peg my toys and uh, and and move to Iota, and that's when yeah. I, uh, I I kind of match it so that um, I, I was uh, part of this process to um, <clears throat> terminate the Iota, take the Iota, not terminate, take the Iota for from the RSGB, uh, explain them why we're doing this, explain them why it is necessary. You know they didn't want to fund it and create uh, together with the current general manager who, who administered previously the outer under the RSGB for, I don't know, about 35 years or something. And um, we created this, uh, this, uh, this limit, this, uh, this uh, IOTA limited. And um, uh, I have to be very honest, I, I would have loved to be out there right now, but uh, so with many others, your kids, grandchildren, probably either playing or doing fun things, uh, I would have liked to, to, to hang on some of those rocks and, and do some, some DXing, but uh, we have to wait. We have to, to see what's going on. So, you know, I, I, I'm not publishing anymore right now. I, uh, it was part of my career, but I, I still like to get involved with, um, uh, you know, the, the, the editing. Uh, I like to read some of these things and, um, you know, so... Um, if you want, uh, instead of uh, dealing with tectonics or tectonic earthquakes, with which I dealt with for probably the first about 14 years of my career, I uh, moved some of those techniques into uh, the rock mass. Initially mining, then, uh, it, it, by the way, this is not just myself. There's, there's a group of people we had. There was somebody, a Connecticut an engineer, who was the guy who, who started to build equipment. Uh, then we had a software engineer. He started to build software. The software that I made at the time was kind of a Fortran thing, which is now not even fun to talk about. It's like super archaic. It's like the dinosaur. That it's you know, it's like million years ago. Uh, it seems like million years ago. Anyway, um, well, that's, and, very, that's very interesting. Um, I, anyway. mean, I, I I do the newsletter for our radio club, so I was just. <laughs> looking for a way to uh, categorize you. I guess you're a seismologist, geophysicist. I'm a seismologist because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a seismologist. I, I, I came from physics. Most of the seismologists comes from geology, uh, geological sciences, 
but my background is into the methods um, and uh, uh, you know modeling this kind of stuff not from uh, so much interpretation side and uh, uh, I guess how the relief and the geology sort of get together and you know identifying uh, faults in the on the terrain that, that that's not my forte my I'm from you know trying to simulate these things and to model them and then eventually trying to um, um, well propose people to use them and you know um, uh, you know, as any physicist, uh, you know, unless the data, uh, the, the real data proves that the model are somewhat right, uh, you know, we're not mathematicians, you know, we just don't solve the equations. We have to prove that those models <laughs> bear some uh, reality. So. Cesar, I hate, I hate to, to cut you off, but we need to get on with the, our, what's our business. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, good night. We should do it. We should good luck. If you encounter any problems with applications or anything, please 